Why is it doing that? Is that you're not doing anything different there, no? no. It just does that, does it? Yeah. You prime uh, it and it runs on the prime. Yeah. And then once the prime's gone, it dies and it doesn't respond to the throttle. And it might be something else then as well. So this video is about the carburetors. It's about the WGA carburetor, a Walbury WGA. And this one in this bag is from another pilot who I've offered to bring away from the recent fly-in, the four chaser fly-in, and um, see if I can fix it. Now, this is the first time I've got it out of, it, out of the bag, it's been in. And uh, there's a problem with it. Now, I'm not an expert on carburetors, but I've rebuilt mine a few times. Um, made a couple of modifications on, on my one, on the throttle plate. Um, I've changed the high fixed jet to a smaller one to improve the fuel economy. Um, I've also um, discovered there's an issue with the metering lever height, which I've addressed by making my own gauge. Um, now this one, um, there's definitely something wrong with it because um, the machine was, was able to prime the parameter prime the fuel into the carburetor, um, start the parameter, and then um, shortly after it would just stall, um, almost like fuel starvation. Um, it's probably an issue with the fuel pump side, not pumping the fuel through correctly, maybe there's a blockage, I don't know. Um, but to confirm that there was an issue with this carburetor, it's exactly the same as the carburetor I have on my uh, Bulldog Polini um, parameter. So we swapped the carburetors over um, and see if uh, if this is the issue. And sure enough, the motor started fine, warmed up fine, and it wasn't showing the same issue this particular carburetor was. So we've isolated it to the carburetor. So I'm just rebuilding the carb, um, and when I checked the metering lever height with my gauge, it wasn't touching, it was about a millimetre away. Okay. So I've put the new metering lever in, the new needle in, cleaned all the jets out, I'm just rebuilding it. And was the new metering lever the right height? No, the packet? it doesn't, doesn't come set the right height out of no. the packet. Okay. So I've had to adjust that to Andy's gauge height. It's yeah. correct in Andy's gauge, but it's incorrect. This one. But it's incorrect in the Wal Walbro one. Yeah. So. It's about a millimetre out. It's about a, mi about a millimetre difference between the two gauges. Okay. So we'll see how that how it works. Cool. And your your engine wasn't running at all, really? No, I've been no? having problems with the engine ever since I first fired it up, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully this will solve it. We'll find it would, out. It'd be nice. It'd be good to see The flights today. are so intermittent and... Um, I don't know how far I can fly, uh, so it's very hard to get away from yeah. a landing zone. And yeah, yeah, I'm, okay. Water You've got no confidence. A, no confidence okay. in, in the machine at the moment. All right, let's see what happens yeah. when this gets rebuilt. And, yeah, uh, it'd, be, it'd be lovely. Yeah, um, a year now I've had the machine. A year. And flying with no confidence. I had the same on my motor for a long time until I decided to look at the carb, and ever, ever since I've done that. It's run really well. It runs rich and it drinks a lot of fuel and I need to address that, but it runs really well. What temperature is it running? 135 to 150 max. It's still running far too rich. Yeah. To, to, I found mine gives the best fuel consumption if it's running around about 175 to 180. Okay. And it'll, on a full power climb that I can hold it pinned, yeah. it will climb to 210, 220. Okay. But yesterday I did a full climb up to 7,000 feet and the highest I saw it was 165 and I know it's running rich. We're talking well. degrees centigrade, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. Cool. This is Phil. His paramotor has been behaving badly. Fellini 80cc. And the carb's just been rebuilt. Meter and lever was way out. Didn't look like it was going to be engaged at all by the diaphragm. And, uh, 
possibly the gaskets were also the wrong way around. So it's all rebuilt now correctly. It's gonna be interesting to see how it works. It's been running really badly for a year with no confidence. So. Nice Warbro WG8 carburetor. Why is it doing that? Is that? You're not doing anything different there, no? no? It just does that, does it? Yeah. You uh, prime it and it runs on the prime. Yeah. And then once the prime's gone, it dies and it doesn't respond to the throttle. It might be something else then as well. Now this is interesting. It wasn't working. We think it might be the carburetor, even though we've done everything we could to build it correctly. So we swapped it with my carburetor. It's an identical one confirm if it is a carburetor problem or not or something else it's not pumping fuel through prime's okay but it doesn't pump through so. same better perfect yeah So it's better, so it's a carburetor. Who knows what is wrong with it? Um, could be a number of things. But what I've said is I'll bring it home, I'll take it apart, um, I'll look at it, I'll look at through, see if I can see any debris in there. Um, if not, I'm going to strip it completely apart and I'm going to put it into this sonic machine. And what this does is, it, you can clean jewellery with this, it basically you put some water in there. Um, I used deionized water, so it doesn't scale up. Um, and I also, because this isn't heated, I boil the water on the saucepan, chuck it in there, put the carburetor in the basket, and cycle it through for about 3 or 4 20 minute cycles. Um, and then uh, that kind of cleans it all out. And then what I do is I dry it off with um, a hairdryer, make sure the water's um, completely removed um, before putting a new um, replacement carburetor kit on it for this particular carburetor. So that's what I'm going to attempt. Um, and uh, I'll video some more clips if I, if I find anything of interest um, that might explain why it's not working so let's see how we go Where the metering needle goes in this area, the port from this side to the fuel pump side, I can see is slightly blocked. Very fine particles in there and it's very, very difficult to see unless you've got pretty good eyesight. But um, if you shine it up to the light, it's, it's clearly um, got something in there. Um, it's particles and I can show you actually what 
what it looks like. So this is the debris you can find in a carburetor. Um, as you can see, there's quite a big clump of it there. Um, and can cause your parameter to bog down a bit. So the first thing to check is do you have a load of debris on this? And it's a good idea to clean it out um, every six months or at least checking you haven't got any build up of debris there. Um, and that actually sits in the fuel metering area. So this gauze goes in into this this hole here and that prevents the any debris going down into the um, into the engine via the um, other side when it lets the fuel through because you don't want to get all the other ports blocked up so um, it's a really good um, prevention there. Progress so far carburetor is completely stripped of all its little bits apart from some of these Welsh plugs which I'm not going to bother taking out um, and all the parts have been sorted out into containers so I can go through and clean those individually. Um, but the main thing we need to clean is this and we're going to give it a sonic bath in this machine here. So first step is to go and boil this water up. Right, so I've reassembled the carburetor. It's been cleaned out thoroughly. And um, what I'm doing now is I'm checking the metering lever height is correct. Now, to do this, I've had to make my own gauge because the actual Walbro original one is not designed for this diaphragm. There's a little button there, and a very old design, there used to be two buttons with like a claw that used to grip onto the um, the metering lever there. And um, I think people have been incorrectly adjusting this. So this 3D printed gauge is designed to um, be compatible with the newer diaphragm. Um, which has one button on there. So, it's just about right. So, I've got some new kits, new uh, carburetor kits here. I'm going to fit. They're all brand new. Now we're going to test the pop off pressure. Holding pressure at 10 psi, which is good. It's supposed to hold it at 10 psi. 11. 14, 16, let's do that again, 10 psi good, 15, 
Dean holding. I think it's pop popping off at 17 psi now. Right, so I've installed the Warbro carburetor um, on my motor. It's Phil's Warbro WG8. He's been having issues with. Um, it's all been rebuilt, and here it is. Swapped over with mine. Um, I've just run it up, warmed it up a little bit, and um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, put it on, my helmet on, safety, and all that. Um, warm up in the garden. I'm just I'm not going to go too mad on power because I've got lots of neighbours. Um, I'm going to see if it feels okay. Um, I'm fairly confident it's running well at the moment, but the true test will be just giving it a bit more revs. So, let's see how we go. camera on the tripod. That's a success, it's all working fine. So, just need to put it on uh, Phil's motor and hopefully he can start flying again. Okay, I'm filming. So, when you're ready. Alright? That was so easy. All good? Yeah. No, no, put it for 10 minutes yeah. to try and get it started. Well, it is warmed up a bit, so that does help. One more? Yeah. I'm going to do this again. <laughs> get out, I did it without even taking that out, swapping hands. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that 